is he here somewhere? You always see Coach Sirianni. He's always wearing other Philly teams, right? Look, look what I did for Coach Wright because he's my guy. Look. Oh. I'm pandering like Coach Sirianni. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I don't got an opening statement. <laughs> when you look at the top ten and the quarterbacks that are in this class, how much movement do you kind of expect going into that that kind of group of picks? Yeah, I think there's a, a lot of good quarterbacks. It's a quarterback a league, and so um, you know, my our assumption is these talented guys. Um, you know, we're we're not in that market, um, so hopefully they all go. Uh, to be honest with you, but they're talented enough to go, and uh, we we do our work on them just like we do our work on every player in the draft. And these are talented guys at the top of the draft, and um, I think there's gonna be a lot of competition for them. What was the opportunity when you had a second round pick and a quarterback to build around that and do other pieces. What, what was that like? Um. You want me to get sentimental about how it was before we pay our quarterback? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, it, it's the nature of the business. I think the, the better thing is when you have a quarterback that's good enough that you want to pay him and that um, he's got a chance to be a great player, show him what kind of player he's going to be. And um, if you don't have a quarterback, you're searching for one. And you can't win in this league without a great quarterback who plays at a high level. We saw how Jalen played in the Super Bowl on the biggest stage, and um, that's exciting for our team, for our fans, um, for all of us. Howie, uh, Pete, Car Howie, Pete Carroll said today that Sean Desai is, is coming to Philly, so can you confirm Pete Carroll's statement? Yeah, I, I would say I would love Coach Sirianni to talk about the coaches. You know, I think that's his area. Um, can't call Pete Carroll a liar, right? Yeah, I would not call Pete Carroll a liar. I would not call Pete Carroll. <laughs> Howie, Howie, where did things stand now with his new front office? What's the, uh, the uh, combine process, the draft process, like, where he's taking charge? How's that allowed? Yeah, at the end of the day, the responsibility is mine, you know, and um, I, I don't say that in any way other than I take that very seriously. And I think we have a process that has spanned different front offices, hasn't always been perfect, but um, we do have a process and a way of doing things. At the same time, if someone comes in and has an idea that can make that process better, let's do that. You know, best idea has got to win. Um, it's funny when you said that I hadn't really thought about that fully. Um, but we've had a lot of communication, a lot of conversation about the things that we're looking for at each certain segment. Um, at the end of the day, like it's my job to outline a vision of, of what we're looking for, um, whether it's at the All-Star Games, whether it's at the Combine, whether it's the free agent process, the draft process. And, um, you know, I think the lines of communication have been great. I mean, there are a lot of really great, talented guys that we've we've gotten in our front office. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with them. Do you, with the number do you think of they, pending uh, free agents you have, how do you approach this all season? Yeah, I think, you know, um, we talked about it a little bit in Philly at our end of season press conference. I think at the end of the day, uh, our job during the season is to prepare for the off season. It's not like we wake up the day after the Super Bowl and um, we say, oh, man, now we got to go figure out the team. Uh, this is what we've been doing. Um, we've been doing it all um, during the season, in the off season. You know, I don't I don't. I wake up every morning thinking about this football team. I go to bed every night thinking about this football team. Uh, it's constant communication about some of the things we're going to do. You know, at the same time, you know, um, we're going to prioritize the things that are important to us, you know, uh, that we build our team on, and we're going to make sure those areas are strong. Um, are we going to get all the free agents back? We're not. Uh, we're just not. We're, we're not capable of getting all those guys back. But um, we also understand that um, we're in a good situation in terms of picks that we have going forward. We have a lot of guys under contract, not only for this year, but going forward. And so, um, you know, we're not going to make excuses for the position that we're in. Did you make, you make an offer? How Is that two questions that I went before? I, I think I got to go with someone first and come back to you before I can get you two. Do you think oh, oh, well, that's fair. Do you think that Gainwell, Kenny Gainwell, is the kind of guy who can take on more of a lead back role? Yeah, Kenny's an impressive young player. Uh, and when you watch him and you watch his skill set, he's got um, a really good vision. Um, he, he's got the ability to get small and get skinny, and um, he can catch the ball. He can protect. Um, he's a good player. You know, we've also seen in this league that you need more than one. It's it's hard to roll with just one running back in this league. So um, I think we're we're happy with Kenny. Know also that um, he hasn't hit his ceiling yet. And obviously he had, he had a good playoff run. But, you know, it's a position that we're going to continue to add at. We don't have a lot of guys under contract right now. So um, we'll continue to look at players of that position and a lot of positions. How, 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 he had to finish up, but now I feel bad. You know, he made me feel bad. Guilt. With the free agents you were talking about, when you have that many, are you, do you make an offer to each one, or do you know that there are only going to be so many that you can 
Um, yeah, I, I think it's it's hard to make offers that aren't really in the range of what a player is going to get. And uh, our players, that, that what they have done for us and how they have worked and the character that they've shown and the success they have had, you know, we're just going to be honest with them and uh, basically tell them, you know, if it's a guy that we're interested in, we'll tell them the range. We understand that they put themselves in this position. They've taken uh, the injury risk um, to get in this spot. And, um I'm just very appreciative of them. I mean, we had unbelievable chemistry. We had an unbelievable group of guys. Um, it's going to be hard to duplicate that, but that doesn't mean that we can't going forward. You know, I, I think just um, obviously we took a little bit of a different tactic this year. You know, um, usually we like to sign guys early and sign guys during the season. And um, because of how hot we started, how well we did, and how many free agents we had, we thought it, it would create a different dynamic if we started to pick one guy and not another guy. And so... Um, we understood that could cost us in the end, but we felt like it was worthwhile because of the opportunity to potentially win a championship. And, you know, unfortunately, we came up short. Howie, where do things stand with you and Jalen on the contract? And are you confident you'll be able to get a deal done this offseason? Yeah, I wouldn't feel comfortable talking about contract situations with anyone, Elliot. I think you know that. Um, you know, at the same time, um, tremendous respect for him as a player, as a person, tremendous respect for the people uh, that work with him to do this. And um, you go through it in a way that you, you want to find a win-win solution. You want to find something that he feels really good about and at the same time that we feel good about and um, can surround him with good players. And um, he knows that. I mean, he's a smart guy. He understands that. And um, that doesn't mean that uh, it's not going to be a tremendous contract for him because he deserves that too. Oh, in the first round last year, you took Jordan Davis. Later, you got Nicobe Dean. Where are those young guys at? I know Jordan had some mm -hmm. injuries, but your thoughts reflecting back on those guys picking last year yeah I think that's part of the exciting thing I think when you look at our first three picks last year um, you know Jordan played the most of those guys missed some time with injury um, but those guys are ready to play they're ready to contribute um, and we knew knew when we were drafting them last year we were drafting them because we thought they were the best players not necessarily because they were the guys ready to fill spots at a position of need and so as we look at, at our team this year knowing that those guys can take a step forward and be part of it and um, being comfortable with young players playing and young players that have talent, that have work ethic and get to put in that spot. And we even saw it this year, you know, when we put young players in spots and how they stepped up. So um, I don't think that's something we're, we're afraid of. I'll get you both. There's been some conversation about uh, the league addressing all uh, these quarterback pushes, push plays to use with Jalen and so forth. What, do you have any reaction to that? Any thoughts on, uh, on maybe why that is now a topic of conversation? Yeah, I think it's a better question for Coach Sirianni. All I know is everything we're doing is legal and, and it works. And just because people do something that's really good doesn't mean it should be outlawed. Looking back on... Is that, is that, is that an okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have enough money to get fined. Looking back, looking back over the past year and how Jalen grew to get to the point now where he's a guy you want to pay, what, what were some of the keys along the way for him to, to make a major improvement from year two to year three? Well, I think uh, the reasons we drafted Jalen are he's an elite competitor, he's an elite worker, and he's got elite talent. I think that sometimes we, we use words like worker and uh, competitive nature that kind of um, frame it in a way that the guy's not extremely talented. And Jalen's an elite talent. He's got... Um, you know, elite arm strength. He, uh, anything you tell him to do, like you saw his completion percentage, his accuracy jump. Um, and so I think at the end of the day, he's he's got a special talent, and you combine that with a special football mind and special work ethic, and it gives him a chance to be a special player. How, how, can, the the offense continue, more folks? how can the offense continue to be dominant under Brian Johnson? Hey, well, I, I think obviously um, Shane, who's here, um, huge part of our success, and congratulations to him and JG. We'll miss those guys. But Brian's extremely talented. Um, Brian's got a great offensive mind. Obviously, Coach Sirianni, um, too, a huge part of what we do everywhere, especially on offense. And um, when you meet Brian and you spend time with Brian and you see how he connects with players and how he thinks about the game, and, um, you know, he's a talented, talented coach and um, excited for his opportunity. How would you need an answer from Jason Kelsey on his future? What would you need an answer from Kelsey on his future? When's our first game? <laughs> Make exception. I mean, he's a, he's a special player, special person. You know, I think that whatever his timeline is, um, you know, we're we're willing to work with him. And um, I think I'm doing his podcast tomorrow, so maybe maybe we'll have a conversation on it on, on it tomorrow. I'll I'll say you brought it up. Hey, for Tio had a question. Hey, buddy. Hey, how are you preparing in the next few months to 
uh, get back to the highest stage of the Super Bowl and this time win it all. I know, I know. Now you're making me disappointed again. Um, you know, I think for us, we got to take it one day at a time. We got to continue to do the things that we think are right. Um, it's a long way away till we play the next game. And we were talking about it on our flight over here that, you know, you get to training camp. You're so excited for the first day of training camp. And then I sit at my desk and I look at the calendar and I go, oh, my God, we have like 90 days till the first game. And I think for right now, all we can do is um, take this process, which is meeting these players. Um, we have two first round picks. Make sure that we we just make good decisions after good decisions. We stack those together and we'll end up having a really good team. And um you know, we'll get to camp and we'll try to bring them all together. Oh, mic drop. And nobody, nobody didn't add anything. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.